In research studies, when people of all ages are asked to draw a picture of the leader, the results are almost always the same in terms of gender. Boys and girls, or men and women, draw a man. So why is this the case? Because leadership is still viewed by most people in the world as a masculine trait or activity. Our unconscious images and assumptions were formed early in childhood and continue with us the rest of our lives unless something transformational happens. This is why it's more important than ever before that we intentionally and thoughtfully raise girls to become leaders. Now you may think that this talk is just for parents, but as the old African proverb states, it takes a village to raise a child. And villagers can include siblings and grandparents and other relatives, teachers, counselors, coaches and school administrators, neighbors, piano teachers, church leaders, and employers. In fact, it can include anyone who can positively influence a girl, from someone who may spend hours a week with her to someone who may just have a one-time, 30-second interaction that could change the way she sees herself for the rest of her life. Today, I will share four research-based strategies that we can all use to raise girls to become leaders. First, help girls discover their own unique gifts, talents, and strengths. Everyone born on this earth is unlike anyone else, but girls struggle to see their distinct uniqueness and how they can use their combination of strengths in ways that no one else can. Now, talents can include things like playing the piano, speaking in public, being a top athlete, or excelling as the lead in a school play, but talents can also include so many other things, like being kind and courageous, responsible, dependable, positive, bold, inclusive, empathetic, assertive, resilient, or being a great listener, learner, or critical thinker, along with hundreds and hundreds of other talents. Through the years, I have met thousands of amazing girls and women who have no clue how remarkable they are. They've been socialized into believing they should be humble and not talk about their gifts and strengths. They've been socialized into believing they're not good enough. Can I say, that's just crap. <laughs> Humility just means being teachable. And you can be humble and know and talk about your gifts and strengths at the same time. In fact, the research says that when girls understand their gifts, they can actually contribute in more many, meaningful ways in this world. So how can we help girls understand their strengths and their gifts? They can only discover them by doing, so we can encourage them to be engaged and involved in a variety of activities and experiences and initiatives, yet even more important, as villagers, we can learn how to give honest, accurate, and specific feedback. Now let me give you an example. So if I'm a teacher, I could ask a girl to come and chat with me briefly at the end of class so I could share an observation. I could say, right when you came to class today, I saw that you went up to a classmate who was crying in the back of the room. Although I couldn't hear what you were saying, I could see that you were looking directly in her eyes and you put your hand on her arm to give her comfort and I've seen you do this with others before. I believe that you have the gifts of empathy, caring, and listening. Thanks for being such a great example to me. This kind of feedback is so much more helpful and meaningful than just telling a girl she's wonderful or great. But whatever we do, let's don't focus on appearance as a gift or strength. The research says we do this way too much with girls and women. But I have to admit, it's kind of hard, even for me. So this is a picture of my one-year-old granddaughter. And when I look at this picture, the words that flow out of my mouth are adorable and cute and sweet. Yet I'm working really hard to say things related to her mobility, her stability, and her inquisitive nature. It's actually a challenge, but it's important. Two, assist girls in strengthening their leadership identity. Now research tells us that boys are socialized much more often to see themselves as future leaders than girls. And research says that boys are more likely to form individual identities without ties to other people, while girls' identities are nearly always 
tied to relationships. In fact, that's one of the reasons why girls define themselves based on what other people tell them. As villagers, we can start using the, the word leader much more often when anyone around us influences in any setting. And if we ever hear someone calling a girl bossy, we can call her a leader. But identity is not just about a girl seeing herself as a leader. The researchers call this claiming. It's also about others following. Researchers call this granting. So there's an interesting interplay between claiming and granting that form that leadership identity. And you can be some of the first to grant. Here are a few ideas from my own research. We can encourage girls to participate and take leadership roles in team sports, speech and debate, Girl Scouts, student government, school clubs and newspapers, church youth groups, musical groups, and paid employment. These help strengthen that leadership identity, but particularly if they have strong and good coaches and advisors. Two, facilitate open conversations at the dinner table where kids can share their opinions in a fun style of debate. Three, help girls love learning by encouraging them to become avid readers. There's a great link and connection between reading, lifelong learning skills, and leadership development. And four, teach self-compassion so that girls will try more often, take more risks, and be okay with failure. Now, as we work with girls to strengthen that leadership identity, consider this. I believe that we actually socialize girls more towards what I call a state of being, or ability, or a fixed mindset, as Carol Dweck teaches. We say things like, you are smart, you are cute, you are gifted. Now, researchers tell us that praising kids on ability can actually be destructive. So now she's in third grade and she happens to fail a math test. Now it's all or nothing. Now she's not smart. She's not good enough. I actually believe we socialize boys more towards a state of becoming or effort or into a growth mindset. We say things like, you work so hard to get that grade, or you put so much time and effort into studying for that test. So if we will remember to praise girls on becoming, on effort, and into that growth mindset, they have more potential to see themselves as future leaders. Three, help girls explore their leadership purpose and calling. Now, girls more than boys and women more than men are more likely to step forward if they feel a sense of purpose, a calling from a higher power, or just a feeling that they are made to accomplish certain things. So if we can help girls practice finding purpose, they will discover interesting and engaging projects and initiatives that then tie into their leadership identity and their unique strengths. Then in turn, their ambitions, their aspirations, and their motivations to lead will increase. One US governor I interviewed said, my earliest memories include going with my mother to count paper ballots until two o'clock in the morning. These experiences helped her feel called to lead as a teenager and then to run for public office when she got older. And four, teach girls how to effectively reflect. Now, most people think that it's actually experiences that teach us life lessons. But it's not experiences that teach. It's actually reflection on the experience that teach. Warren Bennis, is, Warren Bennis once wrote, there are lessons in everything, but experiences aren't truly yours until you think about them, analyze them, examine them, question them, reflect on them, and finally understand them. Use your experiences rather than being used by them. To be the designer, not the design, so that experiences empower rather than imprison. Leadership is all about learning, growth, and change, and it takes reflection to do that. So instead of just giving advice to girls, let's help them learn how to reflect by asking them questions like, 
So what did you learn from that experience? Or if you had to do that all over again, what would you do or say differently? And one more tip. We can help girls have transformational moments that they can use to reflect on if we do what I call a tap on the shoulder. So men will throw their hat in the ring for a promotion or to run for public office when they feel about 50 to 60% qualified, while women won't do so unless we feel about 90 to 100% qualified, mostly because of socialization. But even if everything is equal in every way, the research tells us that girls and women need a tap on the shoulder about 30% more than men. So here's an example. Have you, have you considered running for city council? You know what's going on in the community. You articulate yourself well, and I believe you can make a difference. Two or more taps for girls and women, it's just magic. They're more likely to take it seriously, think about it, reflect on that, and then act. So how do we raise more girls to become leaders? The four research-based strategies I've shared with you today should give you a good start. We need to help girls discover their talents and their strengths. We need to help strengthen their leadership identity, help them explore their purpose and calling, and then learn how to effectively reflect. It really does take a village to raise a child. And whether we just chat with her for a few minutes as we're loading an airplane, or we see her once a year at a family reunion, we, you, can make a difference in her life. As I look at what's going on in the world around us today, I'm absolutely convinced that we cannot just prepare and develop leadership in a select few who happen to fit that image of a leader that we were socialized to see. I believe that we must prepare every girl and every boy to become the future leaders of tomorrow in our homes, neighborhoods, schools, communities, businesses, governments, and beyond. We must do better. And if we raise more girls to be leaders, we will. Thank you.